Hello and welcome to Bear Brook State Park. We are so excited to be teaching you all about nature this season. Today we're going to show you around Bear Brook State Park where we're living this season. And to start off, here is the lodge, mainly where we will prepare all of our fun activities for y'all. This is the lodge. Let's check it out. Here we are at Bear Brook, the namesake for our beautiful home this season, Bear Brook State Park. We're working with the Student Conservation Association and AmeriCorps to get kids like you excited about nature. Welcome to my cabin. Since we are digital educator naturalists, D-E-N, this is called the Den. Here we are. always a good place to relax. All right, and this is my cabin, and we're gonna take you inside so you can see where we live. This is our good old wood stove named Burn and Bessie, which brought us our cabin name. Bear Brook is also an excellent place for recreation. Woo! You can also canoe, camp, and hike here in the summer, along with snowshoeing and sledding in the winter. <laughs> That's a good one. And it's a great place to make new friends. And we're always ready to swing into our next adventure. Hello, today we're going to be talking about the earth as a system. And the earth is made up of many different parts that allow us to be able to live here. So here is a picture labeling all of the different spheres of the earth. And there are four of them. We have the atmosphere, the geosphere, the biosphere, and the hydrosphere. And you can see that they all work together to create our individual environments. So today we are going to be talking about the four different spheres using examples found here in Bear Brook State Park. So the first that we're gonna talk about is the hydrosphere. And hydro means water. So this is all of the liquid parts of the earth. This includes water, and rain and rivers and oceans and snow and ice and every other type of water that you can think of, including the water that you drink and comes out of your faucet. So now we're gonna give you a chance uh, to talk about with either yourself or uh, with discuss as a class, some examples of the hydrosphere around you. So teachers, you can use this to pause to um, use as a discussion. Some examples we came up with were the Merrimack River, and the New Hampshire coast. Okay, now we're moving on to the geosphere. And geo means ground. It is the solid, non-living parts of the earth. So you can see the rock at the upper right-hand side. And we have minerals, which make up rocks. That's why they're so rough when you can feel them. And we also have just landscapes in general. You can see Mount Washington over there on the bottom. And the geosphere, kind of forms the basis for all of the other spheres. It's the ground that you stand on and lets us be here on Earth. So now it's your turn. What do you use the geosphere for? We came up with a couple examples ourselves. Uh, we like to rock climb using the rocks of the geosphere. And we also like to relax at the beach using the sand of the geosphere. So now we come to the atmosphere and atmos means air. So this is uh, layers of gases all around the earth that make up the air. Um, this protects the surface of the earth and includes oxygen that we breathe and clouds and wind and weather that make our day-to-day -day life exciting. 
So now it's your turn to share some things that happen in the atmosphere. Some examples that we thought of are clouds floating around, bringing rain and weather, and uh, birds flying. This here is a purple finch, which is New Hampshire's state bird. That brings us to the biosphere. And the bird in the last slide was an example of something that would be part of the biosphere. So bio means life, and it is the living parts of the earth. So this includes things like plants, like the trees in the bottom pictures, as well as animals, like this little nuthatch, and microorganisms, like lichen, which you can see on trees in the area. So now it's your turn. What is your favorite animal that lives in New Hampshire? Some of our favorites include the moose you can see in this picture, the ermine, and the red fox. In conclusion, as you can see, the four spheres all work together to create one big Earth system. We'll be coming back to these spheres throughout the season, and we'll be seeing how impacts to one sphere can cause changes to the others. We are now going to introduce the Earth Stewardship Pledge. We're going to end our lesson every week with this to help reaffirm our commitment to the Earth. We will be using gestures to help you remember this pledge, and we hope that you follow along with us every week. So here we go. I pledge to care about the world around me, to investigate and explore the world around me, to share my learning and do service to make the world around me a better place for plants, animals, and people. I carry this commitment with me always. I am an Earth Steward. We hope that you enjoyed the Earth Steward Pledge and that you continue to practice that as the weeks go on. We're going to finish up the lesson today by doing a journal. So we're going to end our lesson every week with a journal. And this, the purpose of the journal is to make sure that you are learning what you want to learn and that we make sure that that happens. So today's journal is we're going to start off easy and we're just going to take five minutes and answer these questions in the Google Slides. So we are going to answer what is your favorite thing about nature and what parts of nature do you want to learn about together. So go ahead and take five minutes to complete that. And thank you very much. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.